Hello Greek 12s. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Vilileni Nkosi. In this video, I will be looking at the previous question paper. The paper is based on the human evolutions. So this paper was written in May, June 2024. It was for people who were upgrading. It's for life sciences paper 2. So this is the paper. And as you can see, these are, this is the diagram and the, the questions. Are here so first of all before we answer the questions uh, let me analyze the diagram so here is the diagram so the question say the diagrams below represent the skulls of hominids so these are the skulls of a uh, hominids as you can see we've got three skulls so this one is for homo sapiens and then here we have gorilla gorilla and then we have homo nali so the different here as you can see this one it's flat so this one it's not a uh, slopey this one is flat while this one it's a bit slopey and then also this one it's slopey and then again the different this one it has a pro ridge so pro ridge is this bone on top of the eye so this one it has a, a pro ridge and then we have cranium bone the cranium bone is these bones that protect the brain the bone that houses the brain we call it cranium bone so as you can see the homo sapiens it has a big cranium bone and the gorilla it has a small while homo naledi it's not big as homo sapiens but it's not small it's bigger than the gorilla gorilla so this is another different and then we have another concept that is called prognathias so the prognathias it's the protrusion of the jaw like as you can see on the homo sapiens the jaws are not a uh, highly like are not protruding high uh, big from the line of the eye so the jaws are not protruding high while the jaws of the gorilla as you can see the line from the eye it goes like here but the jaws there is a big distance from here and the line of the eye so this concept is called prognathias and then also the homona lady it has a big prognathias but is not bigger than the gorilla so homo sapiens it has a small prognathias while gorilla has the biggest prognathias and the homo lady it has a intermediate so it's in the middle between gorilla and the homo sapiens so these are the things that i can take out and then we have cranial ridges so the cranial ridges it's this bone and uh, on the gorilla this cranial ridges is connected to the strong muscles that are joining the teeth so when this gorilla is chewing hard food so it uses those muscles so those muscles are connected to cranial ridges while a homo sapiens it has small or none homo sapiens because most of the homo i mean it has a small or none cranial ridges so because most of the homo sapiens they eat soft food so it doesn't need strong muscles when coming into chewing also the homo lady it has a small cranial ridges so this is the information that i can take out so now let's get to the questions so the questions will fall on this space while the solutions will fall on this space so let's get to the first question the first question say list three similarities in relation to vision that are shared by these organisms so here we have to talk about something related to visions so something that is related to the eyes that is similar to both organism so uh, first question you can the first answer you can say the eyes are in front so as you can see all this organism the eyes are in front and then again you can say 
it has they has a binocular vision so binocular vision uh, simply means they have two eyes that are working together so both they have two eyes that are working together so that thing we call it a binocular vision or we can see object in three dimension so this make possible by the two eyes so again uh, the another thing they have they are stereoscopic vision so when you talk about stereoscopic vision it's like and uh, we are able to see three dimensions like on an image so like we know the image is two dimension but our eyes make us the believe that something is in three dimension even if we look at it on two dimension so this is all the organism are able to perceive that information and then another thing they have color vision so the, by the color vision is because they have cones uh, like the eyes on the retina they have cones so these cones they are able to differentiate between the colors all this organism they are color vision or they can see colors so these are the common things related to vision to these organisms so now let's get to the next question next question say name one species in the diagram that was most prognathous so like i talked about the prognathous the prognathous is the distance uh, between the line of the eye and the end of the jaw so like the distance from here like to the uh, to the eye like here as you can see the eye so this distance is small also this one is big but it's not bigger than the gorilla so here the answer the species is gorilla gorilla so like uh, let me give you the answer so the answer is gorilla gorilla it has a most prognathous so it has protrusion of the jaws and then now let's go to the next question next question say describe the two structure that causes the species named in question 3.2 uh, 3.4.2 to be most prognathous so why this gorilla gorilla it is more prognathous it's because of the jaws and the teeth so as you can see this canine or the teeth of this organism are very large so that is why it's more prognathous so now let's get the answers so it's because it is a large canine or the large teeth so you know the canine are these teeth here those teeth that uh, most animals are used to to hold a uh, prey are called canine and then another thing we can say it has large jaws so jaws is this part that is where uh, the teeth are in so it has a large jaw that is why it has a most or this organism are most prognathous and then uh, let's go to the next question the next question saying homo naledi was bipedal for most of its adult life so when we talk about something is bipedal it used two legs to walk so this part here is bipedal so uh, explain how the structure of homo naledi skulls will have assistance in bipedalism so now we have to explain how this organism here uh, is assisted in bipedalism so uh, first we can say this organism a uh, more forward position of the foramen magnum so when you talk about the foramen magnum we talk about this hole where spinal cord it enters the brain so this hole with the hormonal is more forward unlike the gorilla the hole you'll find it somewhere here but with the hormonal the hole is more forward it's like somewhere a, at the center of the skull so being at the center of the skull this will allow the spine to enter 
vertically beneath the skull so it will enter like this the, the spinal cord will enter like beneath the skull so as the spinal cord enter beneath the skull then to support the skull this one is able to stand with two legs because the spinal cord is in the middle of the skull but with this one because the foramen magnum is somewhere at the back so it's not going to be easy for this animal to stand on two legs so this kind of animal we call it quattro pedals so it use four legs to walk so this one it use two legs to walk and then we call it by petals so now let's go to the next question next question say describe the difference between homo sapiens and the gorilla in relation to the shape of the spinal cord and the pelvis so now we have to explain the difference between gorilla and the homo sapiens so homo sapiens is also by petalism it used two legs to walk and then this one uses four legs so now we have to explain the different so in terms of spinal cord we can say homo sapiens has a s shaped spine so this one it has the s shaped spine while the gorilla has a c shaped spine so these are the different in terms of spinal cord and then now we have to explain the different in terms of pelvis so in terms of pelvis homo sapiens has a short and wide pelvis so while the gorilla has a long and a narrow pelvis so these are the different so uh, you must know these things so uh, this is how we will get all the marks if we write it like this one so now let's go to the next question which happened to be the last question the last question say explain why the gorilla gorilla species has a cranial ridges so the cranial ridges uh, i talked about is this bone here which uh, is attached to the strong muscles that help with chewing so now we have to explain why this organism has a uh, cranial ridges is for attachment of a strong muscles so these strong muscles are attached to the cranial ridges because this animal is not eating soft food it eat hard food so to assist in eating strong food so this one it helps in like this ridge here it, it is attached to the strong muscle and then those muscles are attached to the jaw they helps with eating the strong food so i hope this is the last question so if you have watched this video to this far uh, thank you very much please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so if you're studying good luck with your studies thank you very much god bless you